Hello, this is Sabrina Allery with a video tutorial for ClearSnap, and today I have a mini album to share with you as well as a technique for creating sort of a batik inspired background. And we're also going to be taking a look at some of our brand new released products. We have six new shades of the Spritzers Archival Dye Spray Ink. Um, I'm going to be using three of our six released, newly released stencils in this album. And then we'll be taking um, a look at our our six six shade ink pad, which is great for stenciling. These were actually released in the spring, but they work perfectly with today's project. So let's get started. So I just want to show you what I what I kind of have going here. Um, we took a vacation about six years ago to Washington, and I was really inspired by this fern stencil. That's the first thought, thing I thought of was our trip to Washington. I have all these pictures that we took, never really done anything with them. So to make an album come together really quickly, I just created six dividers, um, one for each of the days we were there, and I just used the each of the shades of ink to create a batik looking um, background. Um, I use the fern stencil, the number stencil, and the stonework stencil as well. Um, and you can kind of see my daughter made one as well. So this is a really easy um, technique you can use for backgrounds and it looks really nice. So I have a sheet of 4x6 cardstock here which I used as my base for the dividers. Um, I'm using cardstock because I kind of like that organic feeling that you get when you apply water to the cardstock and it warps. Um, if you do not like that effect then you're going to want to use watercolor paper. Um, the inks are not going to warp your paper at all. That's one of the things that I really love about the color box sprays. Um, each of the different um, types, the spritzers, the smooch spritz, and the sprays, um, you're not going to get that warped texture at all. Um, it's the adding the water to the paper that is going to give you the warping. So if you want to avoid that, again, do not use cardstock. Use watercolor paper. Alright, so I'm just going to begin by wetting, wetting my background so I can do a wet on wet watercolor technique. I think you'll agree that watercolor is still all the rage and it's, it's just a really beautiful um, effect. So I've got my background nice and wet. And then I want to use um, Mermaid, which is just a really nice shade of blue. I'm going to spray this right here on my mat. Um, these watercolors, these spray inks are perfect to use as watercolors. They're basically just mixed up and ready to go. I've got my brush wet, my background wet, and I'm just going to apply the paint by sort of just dabbing it around. The water on the background is going to just help it spread. Um, in a very loose and uncontrolled way, um, which is, I think, really one of the most beautiful, um, beautiful effects of watercolor. So I'm just dabbing that all over. I'm not doing um, the brush strokes. Again, I'm just dabbing on here with my paintbrush. If you want to, um, you can do a monotone like I did in my book here, or you can add another shade to blend as well. Get my brush wet again and just apply that. This is more, I suppose, a true batik with the uh, mixed colors blending together in the background for sort of that tie-dyed effect. All right. When you're happy with your background, you can wipe up your ink if you want um, to keep continue blending and your paper dries, then just add more water. To, while, while my paper is still wet, I want to get some ink splatters to mix in there as well. So I'm just going to stick my paper right into my color catcher. And I'm going to do a very light spray. Just one spray. <coughs> While the paper is still wet, those spritzes are going to blend into the background as well. We'll set our inks aside. And I'm going to lay down this stencil. It's called Tropical. And then I want to use my Frost White Pigment Ink. I'm going to apply that 
with an art dauber and I'm just going to begin layering on there. You can wait for the background um, to dry or you can get started right away. Just dab it on there real lightly. Um, I like I like how with the pigment ink the color still the background color still shows through a little bit. It's just a bit muted. You can see what we've got so far. The fern is there. It's just really light. Next I want to add my little section for the number. And so I'm going to apply this stonework stencil towards the bottom of the page here. You can see these six color pigment ink pads. Um, this is the farmhouse. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but these sort of um, coordinate. There's orange, green, yellow, purple, blue, and then red and, and putty. Not quite the same, but I thought they worked very well together, so I chose to use this. And I'm going to apply my blue ink. That's what the six pad is so perfect for stenciling. Because you've just got that little bit of pigment there. It's easy to blend together. Um, if you're not going to... If you if pigment ink is not something that you would normally um, purchase, this is a great way to get just a few colors. So you can join in on all the stenciling fun. All right. The next thing I chose to do just to sort of highlight that block, uh, I suppose you can use this template and then I just outlined right along there with the colored pencil. to highlight that section there. I really like the stonework. It's not just a rectangle, it's not a circle, it's sort of a free shape. Now, either um, you're going to want to use the heat gun at this point to help dry all the pigment ink, or you can wait to overnight to allow your paper to dry, let that pigment ink fully dry, and then we're going to sponge on some ink for to, to add our page number here. Any shade will work. What I really love about the daubers, they really hold the pigment ink for a long period of time so you don't have to worry about it. Pull that off. On my sheet, I sprinkled on some gold embossing powder and you can see the pretty metallic effect. Um, I really like how it looks with the soft, batiked watercolor. 